Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Land Tries Root. I'm a big fan of digital board games, and this is the uh, the newest one from Direwolf Digital. Direwolf? Direwolf Digital. Uh, based on a, a very popular uh, board game of the same name that we actually we own, but have not found the opportunity to play because we bought it like pre-COVID. So, you know, there's that. I'm glad we got a digital opportunity that maybe makes it a little easier to check out. It is 15 bucks. I received a review copy. I'm, I'm a sucker for these kind of digital adaptations. They, they, and Direwolves have been really good historically. Some of them have been hit or miss uh, from other companies, but I'm eager to see uh, the basics of this game. And I do hear it's a 60 to 90 minute game, but it's very critically acclaimed. So we'll, we'll see how far we go in this. The, like just doing the tutorial and like a little sample play might be as far as we get. Welcome to Root, an asymmetric game of warfare and adventure where four unique factions struggle for control over the vast woodlands. In this scenario, you will play as the ambitious Marquis de Cat. Long before they became the military and industrial powerhouse they are today, the Marquis came to the forest with a small band of warriors and a few modest buildings. I hear the flapping of wings in the distance. Move quickly to establish your hold on the forest before the feathery foes, the Airy, arrive. Okay, your goal is to rule five clearings. Move a warrior into a neighboring clearing to expand your rule. All right. Um, I will use your boot. And I will select the warrior to move. And I will move you here. So the production value is actually very high for, <laughs> for a game like this. Each clearing has a suit representing the community of the creatures living there. So here it is, foxes. When you have more buildings and warriors in a clearing than your enemies, you rule it. When you use the march action, you get to make two moves. Make another move now. Okay, maybe I'll, I was just going to say I'll send you over there to the mouse clearing. But you got some kind of handshake deal. Let's end our turn and rest. We have a big day of building ahead of us. Alright, if you insist... Oh, so we have a sawmill that's, I was just going to say, producing wood for us. You generate one wood at the start of your turn. Wood is used to create buildings. Now we have one wood supply. Dude, I appreciate all the, the arrows and the pointing we got going on here. Let's build a recruiter to get more warriors in the forest. Select the build action. And then choose a clearing to build in. Let's build over here. And we will build a recruiter. Oh, and you got two spaces to build on. Okay, I'm starting to pick up a little bit, I think. Use the recruit action to place a warrior at each of your recruiter buildings. Oh. So we have one here and then one over here that we captured that I guess was maybe neutral to begin with. Spread out your warriors to rule more clearings. Okay, so I will take you and move you here. And do we get to move one more because we got two action points or uh, whatever? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. What have I done? What have I done? Cancel that. <laughs> Start it again. I think I made a mistake. As I feared, an airy warrior has seized a nearby clearing. They aren't friendly to outsiders. March. So you can't read this, but that's okay. You know what? Maybe I can move myself. That's the game. It'd be better if I move myself. There we go. After three actions, the day is finished for the mighty Marquis. Okay, so like building and recruiting and moving probably is what caused our day to end there, not allow us to move anymore. Uh, march your warriors into the clearing occupied by the Irie to challenge them and defeat all Irie warriors. Okay, it will be my turn if you do not mind. We have generated some more wood. Um, choose an action. Well, I think step one, why don't you recruit? We'll get a warrior at, at each location here. We gotta remember, it's a, it's a relatively lean board game, not like a big strategy game. So I, I doubt you have to worry too much about like the population of your warriors right now, or like how to feed them or keep the supply lines running. So I, I'll take this for now. And then we'll do some movement. And let's move you here. Oh, you know what? Let's cancel that then. I can't move you there. Um, let's move you. We have three warriors, I see. Let's move you here. And let's move you here as well. So we've done recruit and two moves, and I believe that'll be the end of our turn. Our warriors will surely triumph over these vile birds. Select battle to fight them off. I guess battling doesn't take an action, maybe? Okay, and I know I, I saw some, uh, like in the trailer, I saw some videos of this. I know there's some dice rolling. In battle, two dice are rolled with sides 0 to 3 to determine hits. 
The attacker has advantage. They take the higher die, leaving the defender with the lower one. Okay. Each player can deal no more in hits than the number of warriors they have in the clearing of battle. Okay, so I could do two. They could do a maximum of one. The dice have been rolled. We've rolled a two and a zero. So we will take the two. <laughs> and we take zero hits ourselves. That's beautiful. You love to see it. Two, I guess, is the highest you can roll, right? On a three-sided die? Zero, one, two? Because, I mean, if you can roll a zero, you can't roll a three, I'm assuming. Destroy the roost. The Irie have built a roost that can recruit more of their warriors. You must attack and destroy it before their flock becomes too strong. Okay. Excuse me. You, you dare come here and try to attack me? The attackers do get to choose the better die, though, right? So what does this mean? I don't know. We'll see. So they have rolled a 1 and a 2. So you're going to take the 2. I'm going to take the 1. And you will die. One of my warriors will die. That seemed like a good turn for me. Or at least not a terrible turn. All right. So what are we going to do? So there is a... You know, I, I feel like I'm in control. I feel like I understand what's happening here for sure. Um, we need to destroy the roost. We might be able to do it with where we stand. Um, but I think it... First, I'm actually going to be like a coward. Let's build uh, here. And we got three spaces. I'm going to... Oh, and they cost more the more you do. Okay, I'm going to build a recruiter up here. There we go. And then um, I'm also going to then recruit. And there you go. We got a few more warriors out here. Now, you have a direct line. I kind of like your positioning here. I'm then going to move. And you're not doing anything down here, quite frankly. So I'm going to move you to here and give us a... I don't know. Maybe having four warriors because it's only a three-sided die doesn't make that much sense. But I don't know. Well, we'll figure it out as we go, huh? What do you got? You're going to move in here? I would not recommend. Now you've left your base open and now I get to maybe just capture your building by default. We'll see. This seems really neat so far, though. Two and two. So you can only hit me for one. I will hit you for two, which is overkill. But clearly we got an okay setup going on here. All right, it is my turn. I think that we should just do move... Move. We still have two actions. Move. And then, maybe like that's... Why not move you up here as well? Can we still battle after doing that? Yes. And then we'll battle. Yes. I will end, I'll battle your roost. Let's see how buildings... Oh, it's defenseless. So if we roll anything, I assume it's it's going to work. <laughs> zero, one. We'll do one. You'll do zero. Excellent. Your advantage as the attacker is let you take the higher die from the right. Your enemy is defenseless since they have no extra warriors. This means you get to deal an extra hit. So we do two hits. Okay. And you are... I mean, you're on fire. Did we win? We have destroyed you. Well done. You've destroyed their roost. The forest is ours for now. So I think that's probably the first tutorial done. I do like a good victory screen. Tutorial complete. Okay. Let, let's do number two here. The long war for the forest. I think we don't need to do these because these teach you how to play as other clans. Let, let, we'll play as the cat clan for now. You, you know, when you're playing board games, you want to keep it as simple as possible. I do also see that we have cards now. The invading Marquita cat wishes to exploit, exploit the woodland using its vast resources to fuel her economic and military machine. She scores victory points by constructing buildings in the woodland. In a typical game, the first player to score 30 victory points wins. This is a scenario. Let's see if you can get to 12. Okay, fair enough. Where you start a game, oh, when you start a game is the Marquis de Cat. You play your keep in one of the corner clearings. That's So I did know one of the selling points of Root is that it's asymmetric. So you actually, and now I think I might have to move myself um, down here just so I don't cover anybody's portrait or anything. But um, So I guess like the Marquis de Cat is an invader uh, that, that plays a little different. That's kind of cool. And maybe the Irie are, are the defenders and who knows what's going on with the other clans. But uh, sure, we'll, we'll start bottom, right? That's not where my camera is, so that's that's good, I think. The keep is the cornerstone of your kingdom. Enemies may not build or place pieces in the clearing with your keep, but they can move there. 
Place your keep now. Okay, fine. Up top right, by the way. The Marquis army greatly outnumbers the other factions. You start with a warrior in every clearing, except one in the opposite corner of your keep. That is airy territory. Okay. Airy, I apologize. Finally, you must place one of each building in the clearing with your keep or any adjacent ones. You must place one of each building in the clearing with your keep or any adjacent ones. The Irie have swooped in and built a roost in the empty clearing. It's quite well defended. They do have six warriors, I've noticed. It's a very, a little risk sort of mechanic here. Oh, so one of each building. I didn't actually realize there were three types of buildings. So there's like a workshop as well as a recruiter and a sawmill. Okay, now I understand. At the start of daylight, you have an opportunity to craft cards from your hand using workshops. You may review the text of cards in your hand by holding your mouse over them. Review arms trader now. The cost to craft a card is shown on the wooden board below its suit. Okay, so the suit is bird. <laughs> the crafting cost is two fox pentagons, and it does sword and two victory points. Whatever the heck that means. I'm sure you're going to tell me the tutorial's been nice so far. Each workshop contributes its clearing suit towards paying crafting costs. Okay, for example, you could craft this arms trader if you had two workshops in fox clearings. I understand. You can craft a smuggler's trail since you have a workshop in a mouse clearing, confirmed, and it costs one mouse. It gives you a bag of water, it gives you wet bag and a victory point. Okay, there you go. Crafting the smuggler's trail rewarded you with a victory point. I understand now. So the goal is not necessarily to like defeat the enemy, the goal is to get more victory points. Or maybe the goal for the Marquis specifically is just to get more victory points and other clans have other factions. Uh, they also score victory points when they build. Okay. Sorry, there's some Final Fantasy XIV going on in the other room. You might hear some shouting. You can only place buildings and clearings you rule with available building spots. Fair enough. Okay, um, this one sounds good then. Um, workshops allow you to craft cards in hand. This is a mouse area. And sawmills give you wood, which help you build more buildings. And recruiters let you get more warriors. They said, let's build a recruiter. I was going to say, let's build a, a sawmill. So clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. But we're figuring it out as we go. Now that there are two recruiter buildings, you can recruit warriors and get double. So that's why you're always going to want to build before the recruit phase. I guess if you're going to build a, a recruiter. Move your warriors to the front lines to defend against the Irie. Okay. This is where I'm still a little confused. I, I don't know how to get the right... Uh, like, how to figure out how many moves I can actually make. You may move any number of warriors using one march action. Look at that. Shows what I know. Remember, when you choose to march, you may make two moves. Alright, so it's just always two, but you can move any number. Use the second move to keep closing in on the Irie. Alright, and we'll, yeah, move both of them. That's fine with me. Okay, so it's a combination of, like, Risk and... I don't want to say Catan, because it's not really, like... It doesn't seem resource-driven like that, but with the victory points. Um, and... and uh, what was that game? The, the, the Animal RTS? I mean, it's a lot like Armello, honestly, as well. Armello's a little bit more fantasy-driven, I guess. But, but still, to move, you must rule either the clearing you're moving from or the clearing you're moving to. This can make it tricky to move deep into enemy territory without a substantial army. Okay. And we're orange, and the orange flag means we own that. Okay. During the evening, you draw one card. You can draw additional cards by having more recruiters. Let's review the phases of your turn. This is a very useful piece of intel. Yo, I love the idea that the turn order is, like, different for everybody in the game, maybe. Like, you do different things during that. So we place one wood at each sawmill at dawn. We craft, and then we can take up to three of five actions, and then at night... We draw a card, plus one for each earned on the recruiter track, then discard down to five. Okay, very interesting. So we've drawn a card. I think I'm ready to take the training wheels off a little. The Marquis de Cat is an upstart. The lineage of the Irie dynasties will surely retake the forest. All right, Vulture. You have made a pitcher of water. Um, the Irie are assigning actions to their decree. Each faction has unique capabilities and their own way of taking actions. 
The Irie may not look like much yet, but their ever-growing decree will allow them to take more and more actions each turn so long as their leader stays in power. It is interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> they, yeah, that seems bad. They found the weak link in our defense. Prepare to fight. All right, 3v1. We would love to see double zeros get rolled. Seems unlikely, though. We did do one, though. So it's not like the attackers go first or the defenders go first. Like, it's all good either way. Hold on, I gotta pause for a moment. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and good to go. We may have lost the fight, but as long as your keep still stands, we can heal fallen warriors with field hospitals. Discard a, war a card that matches the suit of the clearing where your warriors were defeated to return them to your keep. So they were defeated on mouse. Yes. Oh, you built a roost here, I see. We'll discard and return them to our keep. There you go. Very interesting. There you go. We got him back. Was it worth the card? I don't know. You tap your avatar and look at all. Oh, only you can place pieces in the clearing with the keep token. When a warrior dies, you may spend a matching card to return them to the keep. Okay. Okay. There we go. It's our turn. Don't retaliate just yet. Build two more buildings to keep gaining victory points. No cards to craft. Press continue button. Build another building of your choice. Okay, I choose um, to build up here a recruiter. Oh, we don't have enough wood, dude. That hurts. Um, well, in that case, cancel. Um, and I will choose... I mean, I want more wood to build more recruiters. So let's go down here and we'll, we'll build uh, a sawmill in, a, in our keep town. Give me a sawmill there. Because I want more wood for the future. I got a plan, okay? We could use more wood for a building. Let's use overwork to push a sawmill to produce more. Spend a card to place wood at a clearing with the sawmill matching the card. So this, these are bird cards. We, To use overwork, you must discard a card matching the suit of one of your sawmill's clearings to gain wood. Cards in the bird suit act as a wild. Okay. Let's do that then. And we'll we'll overwork this clearing. Thanks for the wood. Excellent. You now have enough wood to make another building. You may spend any wood on the map connected to the clearing you wish to build to, so long as they're connected by clearings you rule. Not a problem right now. Okay. So we'll build and uh I th honestly, this sounds maybe insane. But I'm like, you know what? Oh, I was gonna build another sawmill. Uh, I do want to build a workshop, but I want to make sure that I got the right suit for it. Like, we want to be in Fox Fox territory. We are in Fox territory. Okay. We're going to build a workshop here then. We need more wood faster, though, for sure. Tap your avatar for more building info. All right. So this is how many victory points you get for each. I understand now. So we're going to get to 12 real quick. This is not going to take a long time. You are out of actions. By discarding a bird card, you can get another action. Okay. Um... And you haven't recruited. Let's do so. I choose to recruit. Alrighty. Ambush. You may ambush in a fox clearing. Defender may play to deal two immediate hits. Yo, that seems sick. More warriors arrive each day. The Eerie will use them to crush your pitiful forces. Well, this is a perfect time for this ambush card. I, I think I did not play it, and as a result... <laughs> oh, no, there you go. You have an ambush card. You can play it now to destroy two attackers. Play. Yes, please. An ambush. These cats are more clever than I thought. Get toasted. Now it's a fair fight. Never mind. <laughs> they get to choose the two, so okay. But well, you know what? They're, they're, they're bruised and battered. They're bruised and battered. That's the important thing. Three roosts. They get plus two victory points. It's my turn. Continue scoring points to defeat the Irie by destroying roosts, constructing buildings, and crafting items that reward VP. Okay. I mean, I think if we build um, more recruiters... Uh, we, we, we can't be stopped. So here's my thought. No cards to craft. Press continue button. Alright, so it, it's it's a good day. Step one, what are we going to do? We're going to build... We're going to build an... Uh, 
You know what? I, I don't mind having two recruiters here. Let me get a recruiter here, please. Which I think will also allow us to draw another card in the evening time. We got two more victory points. What's the next step? Heavy recruit status. What's the next step? Um, well, there's a couple of things we could do here. I would like to go here and take out this roost. Obviously, we got a low defense here. Um, but we can also... We only get to move twice, right? So, here's my thinking for now. Hit me with a move action. And let's move everybody in here. I want to... I know that we got some vulnerability there. But I'm not sweating that for now. I think we're in a race for the finish. And then... I actually think... We want to get you to move in here. We'll, we'll move all of our warriors over here. And if we could destroy both of these roosts, who knows what's going to scouting play. Oh, but we don't get to battle. <laughs> we don't get to battle on that. All right, so you're getting victory points. You got three victory points right now. You, sorry, you got four victory points. Go ahead, let's fight. You don't want to fight? Oh, so we're just occupying the same space, but you do have to take one extra action to battle. Okay, I understand now. I mean, I probably wouldn't if I were you, but maybe you know something I don't know. All right, we're going in. 1-1 one, one is perfect for us. I think this is going to be a heavy battle turn for us. And I'm very ready. Four roosts? Oh my god. They, I mean, they're, they are getting powerful, don't get me wrong. So let's see what we got here. We got a crossbow. It does... It probably gives us a crossbowman and one victory point would be my guess. Maybe it just gives us a victory point? This is par for the course with board games, you know? You, you just learn to... You just learn to get over it. So this it, battle number one is right here. I would really like to take out a roost. Three, three. That's poor. You score one for each enemy building and token removed. Removing warriors does not score VP. I don't know why we only lost... Oh, because you can only do a maximum of the amount of units that you have. Oh, that makes perfect sense now that I think about it. Okay, good stuff. We've taken the roost. Keep attacking roosts and placing buildings to reach your VP goal. Um, the next step would definitely be, hey, we're going to battle again. We're going to battle right here. And we'll probably finish the video once we finish this part of the tutorial. But this is something I would definitely peep. Uh, oh, come on, dude. This is something I would definitely peep uh, on the NLSS. Although it would have to be the right day, for sure. Because, we, you know, it, it takes a while to learn how to play these games. Um, I don't love this, but we're going to battle again. We're going we're gonna to send the battle raid back. We're going to run it back. Because if we take out the Roosts, we slow down their victory point gaining as well. 1-0. I can live with that. I don't know if that allows... I don't think it takes the Roost, unfortunately, but... It's a start. <laughs> it is not a start, by the way. Uh, but that's okay. We'll, we'll probably win on the next turn if they don't. I suppose we could have just built more buildings. We did have two wood. Oh, they've entered turmoil. Could not recruit plus dude. The leader has been removed and replaced with somebody else. Okay, I have no idea what that means. But I imagine if you knew how to play this game, you would be like, yo, that's an important moment. Um, crafting phase. We will craft a mouse in a sack. It'll give us some water, <laughs> I guess. I don't have no idea what it means, dude. And uh, some victory points. Here's the thing. We only need two more victory points. I think the, the smart thing to do... No, no, no. Don't overwork. The smart thing to do would be to uh, build. And we'll just go ahead and because we're back here, we'll build a... Uh, you know what? A recruiter's going to give us three victory points. We win, right? We've won the game. We've won the tutorial. So this is maybe not the most representative look at Root. Um, but it definitely, I mean, in its own weird way, uh, honestly, having a tutorial that's this robust for a game that's kind of difficult to learn in the first place is super neat. So I, uh, I, I'm prepared to sign off that this is a good time. And you can just look at the reviews of the 
the the actual physical board game itself to tell that it is very much well liked a little bit uh i don't want to say it's inaccessible because i think that that's not you know people are going to be like okay twi try playing twilight imperium um but the the fact that the tutorial is at least good enough to get me going with one faction i'm feeling pretty stoked about that um and of course online play as well you do have to uh, get a direwolf digital account i suppose but um something that we might check out on the nlss for sure apart from that this is mostly an advisory if you're a big fan of root and you don't want to get together with people because of obvious reasons it is available on steam go check it out i did receive a code for this for free but it's uh 15 bucks american i believe on steam i'll put a link in the video description hope you guys enjoyed it seems like a cool game Thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. Click the like button if you enjoyed the episode. It's the single best way to help me out as a content creator. Apart from that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!